Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Mini Metro. This time we will be doing the Neva the Great Achievement, which is deliver 1500 passengers in St. Petersburg with tunnels on no more than one line. Interestingly enough, this was actually one of the achievements I actually achieved off camera, but I actually forgot to record a video for, so here it is. And I thought I was mentally done with Mini Metro. Embarrassingly enough. Nevertheless, Having all tunnels on one line is kind of a very straightforward, um, kind of a very straightforward condition to follow. Just pick one line, step or as I'm probably doing here, I've sort of just established the first tunnel and then it's just like mentally, okay, we're just gonna make sure that the blue line uses all the tunnels. Interestingly enough, we start with five tunnels, which I suppose is a very nice, uh, a nice way of alleviating some of the, uh, troubles we will have with this map, but certainly my play is not very, um, he just, now that I'm watching the, now that I'm watching and doing post commentary on my replay, I can definitely see a bunch of mistakes, which I will point out during the gameplay itself. So, one thing to note on this map is that we've only got five li we've only got five lines maximum, so that's definitely an issue of contention, and the other thing is about the general, the other thing in relation to the, the achievement is just basically the general structure of how you want that one line with all the tunnels to look like. And um, basic, basically the idea I had in my head to begin with was to basically have that blue line sort of sort of be like a general loop around the whole area. Um, in sort of later in the game, I sort of just realized that's not exactly quite the best configuration, but I will definitely point out the finer details of it just later. So I've established a red and green loop in the middle, which is pretty much, pretty much as on par with my user strategy, and uh, and naturally, ideally we will we want we will want to extend those to include additional trains going in opposite directions because naturally that's pro that's the great that's probably the easiest way to minimize congestion, especially with like say the two consecutive circle stations on the green line, and um because when 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 it gets a bit more congested what will happen is that one circle station will get congested because the train don't, doesn't have enough space to pick up customers on the other circle station. So you can see here that's me rearranging my blue line now Now that some, some additional stations have spawned which should give us a bit more flexibility but also make things a bit more difficult. As I mentioned before, my play is slightly sloppy and the main reason is that um, I actually thought I was done with my whole set of mini metro when I recorded the, the Let Matt Shows Off video because it was just basically like my final video for the series just to say, you know, thank you mini metro for being such an amazing game, being a game that I really enjoy playing and nevertheless, I don't mind coming back to it because it, as it turns out, I still remember most of my strategies and or maybe it's just that I have a good memory. Well, I'm not complaining. Cause, uh, cause basically uh, after I was alerted to the fact that I, I had not recorded videos for, for all the achievements, I, I just basically, uh, booted up Mini Metro after re-downloading it. And, um, thankfully it's a very small game file as opposed to some of the AAA games, but, <laughs> uh, well, let's just say it could have been worse. So, and I was just like, okay, let's, let's just try doing this achievement. And I got this on the first try. So, in my, so most of the strategies I have, I, I still retain, so I'm pretty sure I would be able to do some of the easier achievements fairly easily. So I think, I think that's to say though, whether this achievement in itself is easy at all is actually kind of a different question. And it really depends on your own knowledge and expertise on Mini Metro. Cause, um, definitely after the 500 and 1000 mark, there will be a certain degree of micromanagement, which will def, which will definitely be, which is definitely something that, um, that if you've not practiced, then of course it, you may get hit, you may get stuck at some roadblocks. So you can see me sort of just extending the blue line sort of around to the outside and, um, and, uh, naturally the blue line is very long. So naturally the blue line will be the one to get the maximum of four locomotives or basically the upper limit of, of four locomotives on it. Since, and uh, the other thing to point out right now is that the blue line has a lot of unique stations. In the top left, we see we have a diamond, a, well, okay, there's a different type of diamond station, but um, I don't, don't remember what I called that one before. Let's just say a square rotator 45 degrees, a star, a pentagon, and a teardrop station. So 
that basically will cause congestion issues in the sense that in the sense that uh, uh, customers on the green and red lines will have to drop off uh, these unique customers onto the intersections. And the other thing to note is that the, due to how the green section is laid out, it will also sort of shift some of these unique customers to the red line, which will cause further congestion because the red line needs to now carry those unique customers, meaning the red line will, the red trains will not have the capacity to carry its usual, its usual set of customers. So that's definitely something to sort of keep in mind. And, um, the other thing you probably would have noticed by now is that I'm sort of low on tunnels. So at, it makes sense at week three, at the start of week three, to get another set of tunnels and truth be told, I think that's pretty much all you need. Just one additional set of tunnels, putting a total of seven tunnels in total. And um, although it's really dependent on the station spawn, you could put, if you are lucky with the spawning of stations on sort of the outer top right-ish area, you may be able to actually not need the two additional tunnels. Nevertheless, um, it, it really wasn't that much of an issue for me, but Definitely at this stage, staying to three lines was definitely somewhat of an issue since, um, I, I don't really, I, I know I wasn't really paying much attention to distribution of trains and carriages. It was more just me. Okay. It was more just me thinking, okay, well, this station is happening. This stuff on this station is happening. So I should probably put a train in or an or carriage on that too. Uh, pretty much. Basically, uh, alleviate whatever problems there are coming, but nevertheless, I've established my blue loop, which, considering the distance between the circle stations on the top and the circle station on the right, I could have probably left un, unlooped, uh, whatever the right term is. But, um, yeah, so that, that was definitely something that can be improved. Um, I do know that some of the angles are definitely a bit Odd because uh, the, one, the one thing that's definitely worth um, rehashing is that the, the 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 smaller your angle, the 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 more time it takes for your train to actually travel from that station and away from and away from that station since it needs to slow down to turn around. Of course, I, as I've said in the previous video, I haven't really tested it. I'm sort of just taking it as uh, the forward. And but nevertheless, even though it's a little fiddly, it's not that big. It's not too much trouble to just readjust these angles whenever you connect a new station to a line. So I've acquired now an orange line. I mean, I'm giving the green line another train just to have one going in the opposite direction, just to help out a little bit with some of the congestion that's happening. Got more stations spawning on the right. And um, that's definitely where we will start putting our orange line at some stage um, to help out with some of the outer areas of the blue line because naturally with the blue line being this long and in such a gigantic loop it is going to be pretty busy it is going to be it it is going to be fairly congested there's going to be plenty of passengers waiting to hop on the train only to have another uh, only to have a full train go past and leave them in the dust there was probably a little more graphic than I intended it to be. Not that it really is any form of actual graphic gory kind of image, but yeah, let's just pretend we're actually running trains and there are people that we actually care about despite the fact this is a very minimalist game where customers are represented as simple polygons. Hmm. Moving on, we've extended our blue line a little more. Again, not so ideal. But um, in, in hindsight, definitely maybe would have just left the orange line to deal with the outside stations and just left the blue line just unlooped but connected to just one circle station on the outer right area. So, for example, uh, if you look at the top left of the blue line, that circle station after the Pentagon station would, where, would ideally, ideally be where that blue station, the blue line would stop there and in the bottom right, that circle station after the square station would be the other spot where the blue blue line would stop, and um with and with that I can actually use the orange line to help ferry customers around and definitely, um de definitely that will sort of just reduce some of the some of the overloading on the blue line since it's so it can basically focus on ferrying the unique customers around rather than having to attend to other station which. It's basically, um, I'm thinking of the, I'm 
I'm basically thinking of the term overloading, and um, the first the first time I so, I sort of just heard of that concept was in chess when it's like it's like one piece is trying to take care or protect too many different things at once, and so you can exploit that by basically um well basically doing something, and as long as long as you're able to recognize these kind of things, so it's like it's very easy for a queen piece to be overloaded because the queen can it's basically the most powerful piece and can pretty much move. Like up, down, left, right, and in diagonals across the chessboard, so it's very easy for the queen to be overloaded and just thinking, "Oh, I must protect this pawn over there, and oh, I must protect this. Uh, I, I must be, I must be here to prevent this checkmate." And so, and then it's just like, "As the opponent, I'll just take that pawn, move the queen out of place, and then I'll checkmate you." <laughs> it's been a long time since I played chess, and uh, needless to say, I'm not very good at it now. And um, it's. It's interesting, really, because um, because it's 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 interesting how we can define certain concepts, and um, when we think about it, we can actually easily apply some of these other concepts, or just some some of the same ideas to other games or scenarios. So we're getting a few blips, even though even though I haven't actually recorded the sound because once again I was just playing this game while having something else running in the background, and basically I just had some back I just had the background recording software running. And there is no way to separate the game. And no, not that there is no way. It's more that I haven't quite bothered to find a way to separate this individual game sound from the the audio from the YouTube videos or podcasts that I usually listen to when I'm when I when I'm just playing these kind of games or just doing this kind of challenge runs because you know it's like it, for me there's two means of concentration. One is where I just need absolute silence because. There's so much going in my head that I need, just need to build this glass house of structure, and this happens a lot when you're a programmer or a mathematician, and um, you, you're trying to just build these concepts in your head, but because you need the silence so that you can have your working memory, uh, you, you can you, you basically free up your working memory in order to hold all these concepts, and that's that's why that's why it's very that's why if you know a programmer or a mathematician friend, you interrupt them when they're in the middle or something, they will be very very irritated because. It would take them literally like 15 minutes just to build up the whole thing from scratch. It's like they're building a car, it's like they're building a tower of cards, um, in their head. And by interrupting them, you basically, you, you've basically broken down that tower, tower of cards and they need to build it up again. <laughs> uh, luckily, luckily I've sort of been practicing my own mental strategies to award against that kind of, um, kind of situation. So we've been, so I've been extending the orange line a little more to help out with the kind of, kind of a very nasty angle in the bottom right with the triangle station. It's, I won't lie, it's definitely a bit awkward. Thankfully, at the end of that week, we've got our purple line, which we will eventually use to help out the blue line a little more. Nevertheless, the, the green and red stations have sort of fairly remained untouched and definitely it is, um, it is a fault of mine that the green line is actually not interconnected with the blue line because as I, I actually mentioned earlier in the video, the right now the green line has to ferry the unique customers to the red line which has to ferry the unique customers to the blue line and that will create congestion. So the easier way to do it is to actually have the green line connected to a, a station that has a blue line or basically have a station that has both the green and blue lines running through it so that I can actually have the green like the green trains deposit the unique customers where the where the blue train can pick them up, and that basically um increases the efficiency. I mean, I mean, one argument to make against that is that basically what one of the things you're essentially doing is that you're sort of just shifting customers from one place to another in order to avoid congestion on the initial line itself. But right now, that uh, that argument, in my opinion, isn't very convincing. So I'm really not going to um. I'm not going to elaborate on it too much because that, that, that kind of thing just needs a bit of testing and figuring out what should be done and so on and so, and such. So we, we're still, we're still getting blips a lot of everywhere around the map. And, um, it's at this stage that it's really all about, well, at this stage for me, it was all about just micromanaging, making sure that I get trains to congested stations in time, watching the timers. And a good rule of thumb is to make sure that or uh, at least when those timers reach halfway, you basically just move a train that is relatively free. And when I so when I say relatively relatively free, I basically I basically look at the whole line. I look at the number of the customers at and at, I look at the number of customers at each of the stations. And I think okay, well this looks fairly empty. So I 
think I can take a train from that line, so... And other, and other, and other times I'm sort of just moving trains around on the same line, just to deal with some of the more congested areas. Of course, sometimes some of these congested areas can be prevented in the first place, and, um... So, yeah, well, true proper rearrangement of some sort, but... It's, it's like, say, for example, if you look at the purple line at the top... Oh, you can imagine that I put the purple line at the top to help deal with some of the consecutive circle stations... And, um, but since I've only got one purple train, it's not really helping all that much. Mainly because due to the lack of triangle stations up at the top, which, uh, which are really only facilitated by the orange line and, and, and on the other end of the purple line. So basically the pur the purple train will be sort of just holding those triangle passengers for a really, really long time, which is really not all that efficient. Um, and that, that's definitely something that's more a consequence of the uh, station spawning rather than really, well, I mean, I, I guess I could have reorganized my lines a little better, and um, that's not something I can really think. Um, well, if I look at it right now, I'm just trying to ask myself, well, okay, I could probably create a shorter purple line throughout the top, so it would be the two circle stations on the left still there, square station to the circle station, then the triangle station on the top right, then I have the orange line threading through the bottom like it is right now and then ending at the square station because what um is still because one of the things you can look at now is that basically if you look like in the outer area that is the like the top of the right, it's got a it's, it's got a square station, it's got a circle station, and it's got triangle stations. And since things are the most popular stations, it's you can basically have a line itself sort of just managing everything there so that um, that area only needs to worry about putting custom, putting the unique customers at certain stations, like the circle stations I mentioned earlier, so that the blue trains can deal with them. So definitely not very optimal management on my lines here, but basically I was just feeling a bit lazy. I was just like, oh, you know, I'll just, I will just let my micromanagement do the job here. Another awkward angle on the green line, but again, I was kind of a bit lazy when I was playing this and, um, I guess I wasn't really expecting too much for myself because, like, I I was I I'm still sort of a bit mentally done with Mini Metro, but um, but thankfully the strategies are sim simple enough so that I could just pick up the game and play through the rest of the well, I suppose some of the easier achievements and because some of the hard ones I definitely don't want to do the Auckland achievement ever again because I must have um I must have tried that achievement about twenty thirty times before I actually got a run that was really that before I actually got a successful run because. It was, it was like, it was like half the time I had good runs, but because I wasn't 100% concentrating, I would make one small slip up that would cause me to lose the game. So it's the end of week eight, and obviously we don't need tunnels, so it, it was obvious to choose the carriage, and at 1300, I think we're doing pretty well, so putting a carriage on the blue line again, since the blue, well, again, this is sort of just reacting to what is there. And so, I mean, it's very easy to think, oh, okay, you know, the blue line's fairly long. I should probably at least add an, an additional carriage to sort of just help ferry more customers around. And, um, I mean, I mean, that's pretty standard thinking, at least for me. And I imagine most people playing this game. So, um, yeah, the, I, I gotta admit now that I'm watching my own footage, the, the orange and the purple lines really bother me. They definitely could have been reordered better. And as I said before, I could, I could have definitely reordered the blue line to not be a loop so that the, the trains can be, can not be as stressed out and that, so the trains can only worry about transporting the unique customers from all areas to the, the patch of islands on the top left. Red and green line is still, you know, chuckling, chugging along very mellow, fairly merrily. <laughs> and, um, uh, actually the pun is kind of intended because it's red and green, it's also Christmas and people are fairly merry on Christmas, but right, right, right now it's somewhere in Australia is pretty damn hot and Christmas is always something you associate with cold, snow and cool temperatures. So, kind of an oxymoron there really. So, but nevertheless, um, you can see the triangle station sort of in the bot in the bottom left middle ish that has so many customers and that was sort of the thing I was alluding to before in that when we have intersections such as these with a the whole you're gonna get congestion with a whole bunch of unique customers at that those kind of stations. So that's definitely one thing that um hopefully most most of you will have observed while playing through some of the challenges and with a little more time spent on Midi Metro. 
Kind of, kind of square station spawning up the top, which I just attached the purple line to. If that had spawned earlier, would have definitely made a lot of difference. And, um, again, if I had really just thought about it and I um, rearranged my purple and orange lines, definitely would have done better. But nevertheless, we're close to 1500, so I dare say I'm just quite satisfied to have done the achievement itself. So, um, I'm just sort of looking around, there's really not much to say about what I have right now, apart from my own self-criticism and my own gameplay. Definitely some, some lazy aspects to, to my management of this particular set of stations, lines, and trains, but, um, some, I, uh, yeah, I'm at that stage where it's just like, okay, I've got the achievement, let's just not worry about it too much afterwards, because it's, um... For me, Mini Metro is not a game that I would like to invest 100% of everything into. It's just a game that's really sort of just interests me on an intellectual level, and I feel like I've, I've sort of just explored enough of its, um, its challenges, its intricacies, and enough of its, and figured out enough of its strategies to do well enough to, com to do well enough, in my opinion. And, um, and I've never been much of a score attack kind of person. I've never, um, cause I feel sort of just like stressing out to get the higher score to get in something is, it, for me, it causes a lot of unnecessary stress and, um, it's not, and, um, and I know I'm a very terrible perfectionist. It's, um, comes, comes with being a, um, I, I mean, I used to suffer from that a lot as a musician or when I was studying music. And, and so as a result, I'm just like, okay, now I'm just like, you know, it's okay to be a perfectionist, but don't stress yourself out about it. And um, since then, I've sort of just learned to let certain things go and to be fairly more chill about things. So, and just to know my limits, really. And, and yeah, it's just one of those self -dis self learning, self discovery things that you learn when you're in your twenties and growing up. So it's game over. We've broken sixteen hundred. I'm pretty happy with that, and um, I hope you are as well. So with that. Thank you for watching and I will see you on the next video.